Okay, everybody, welcome to, to Cannery Row. Row. Okay, so first stop on the row is the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Let's go and show you just a little bit of it. So you'll know why this is the number one spot when you come to visit Cannery Row. Well, the number one tourist attraction, that's for sure. <laughs> this is the first place most visitors to the area think about when they hear the words Monterey and Cannery Row. It's a splurge, but if you can fit it into your budget, Make sure you visit the aquarium at least once. Okay, ready to go in? Let's go. The aquarium is huge. You will spend at least three hours if you want to explore it all. We always start off on the second floor and work our way back around again. As you cross the bridge, you'll find yourself with a great view of the sea otter tanks. It's super fun to watch them swim. This bird's eye view also lets you see the many pieces hanging from the ceilings and even the recreated lab of Ed Ricketts, Doc Ricketts in John Steinbeck's Cannery Row. But one of the don't miss spots is the kelp forest. It's extra fun during feeding times. A cheese grater or Velcro gets their name green gloves. So they're not too worried about having their fingers close to the mouth. Of course, home. From the adorable cuttlefish to the antics of the sand crabs, there are so many opportunities to get up close to the animals, especially the touch pools. This place just has so much to offer for every visitor. It's fully accessible, but as we found out, it can be challenging when crowded. It really is just one of our favorite places to spend a chunk of the day on Cannery Row. Okay, so now we're on the back deck of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Um, it is really crowded. I, I guess I can't recommend coming Mother's Day weekend. <laughs> it's really busy. Yeah, it's pretty crowded. But um, what was your favorite? Uh, well, you know, I always have a soft spot for the jellies, for right. the blue room. Right. The blue room. It has so many different types of jellies, from the super big to the super small. The babies in our family have always been fascinated and loved it. And if we had to narrow it down to our favorite spot in this aquarium, it would be this corner. There's something just so soothing about watching them float. Um, literally, I could just spend hours in there, just sitting there and watching them float. It's pretty cool. I like the outer bay exhibit i think the best that's like a million gallons of water right yeah it's huge that's incredible the size of an imax theater screen this tank is incredible with shark turtles rays and sardines part of the mix this is another section where you can just enjoy the motion in the tank um oh the new interactive was really cool the tide pool thing where you touch and then the the names come up that tells you all about what the animal is had a really good time at the menus uh, <laughs> watching that. It's actually very funny um, and always fun to see John in a different place of the aquarium. Every time we come we seem to find new things either about John Steinbeck or Ed Ricketts. Um, so <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah, because most salmon farms hold huge numbers of fish. It's really not good for the environment when all those chemicals leach out of the farm. Oh, you do have options. For sustainably farmed salmon, check seafoodwatch.org. Who wanted to sizzling hot catfish filet? <laughs> Let the good times roll, my friend. You made an excellent choice. Um, I love the aviary. What about you? Oh, yeah. That's always fun. So I think my favorite in the aviary is always the oyster catcher, but there's so many beautiful birds there. 
this was one of the most crowded areas because it's an open space where you can really get close to the many different types of shorebirds here at the aquarium. And the octopus came to say hi. I love octopi. Is that how you say it? Octopi? Octopus? Is that more than one? I don't know. Tell us. Tell us in the comments. Is it octopi? Octopus? Is it like moose? More than one octopus is still octopus? Tell us. <laughs> anyway, so now you see why that was the number one place to stop when you come to visit Cannery Row. But we have about four more we're going to share with you. So let's get going. Let's go take a look. The views are great and you never know when you're going to find a cute harbor seal hanging out on the rocks. The aquarium is at one end of the row and we have so much more to see. Number two on the list is a store. That's right, a store. And here's one of the reasons why. There's a giant otter. And my favorite shirt. Mr. Otter and I have a fun time hanging out with each other. Every year I come back and I get my favorite t-shirt all over again. If you're a Harry Potter fan, I'm a Harry Otter fan. Yes, we really stop here every time we visit the row. There are so many great souvenirs here at all price points. It's just seriously our favorite store here on the row. So stop number two. Let's head to number three. Ed Rickett's lab is here. Yep, the one from Cannery Row, but only this is the real life one. Not Doc Ricketts, Ed Ricketts. And you can take tours, free tours, one Saturday a month. Okay, and number three on the stop is this little walkway that people overlook, but it's got a great coastal view. So right here, here we're at the lab, you'll see a sign that says Coastal Overlook. And you take this little walkway right down to the ocean. Along the way, you get to see these little interactive signs, well not interactive, informational signs that tells you all about the lab and the real Ed Ricketts. So Ed Ricketts was an uncertified marine biologist. And I say that because they still use his methods at the marine center close to here. So definitely a centerpiece of Cannery Row. This is the perfect spot if you want to escape from the crowds and just relax for a few minutes. So this walkway behind the Intercontinental Hotel is, um, is not used a lot. I mean, people are down here, but it's not as crowded as you would think because of how crowded it is out on actually Cannery Row. But it is really nice to come down here. It's a nice spot to relax watch the view, check out the kelp field, it's really nice. It's number three on the, uh, on the tour. Okay, on to an unofficial stop. I have a date with a box of chocolates. Yep, Bubba Gumps. And they're celebrating Mother's Day with us. Such a fun spot, and we love eating here. <laughs> All right, so we're not going today because we just got done with breakfast at the Butter House in Seaside. 
Great highly place. recommend. Great place. I'll show you, I'll just lay over some pictures here so you can see just how amazing it was, especially the lavender lemonade. Um, I you had. I got a pog my tie that was out of this world. It was really exactly. good. Good. But Bubba Gums is absolutely one of our favorites because after all, I like shrimp. Shrimp etouffee, shrimp and grits. Shrimp gumbo. Fried shrimp. <laughs> Baked shrimp, barbecue all, shrimp. All kinds of shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> As Bubba says, shrimp is just awesome food. So definitely, this is just an extra. This isn't actually one of our stops, but this is just an extra to come and see and do. Our matey, time for a ride. <laughs> Okay, so we have no idea what we're getting ourselves into. We've never been on this ride. It just came here uh, about six, eight months ago. And so we haven't had a chance to try it out. Don't know if we'll be able to film, but crossing our fingers. Watch out for Thank that you. <laughs> we went down the stairs, but there is an elevator. This ride is fully accessible. Located right here beneath the streets of Cannery Road. These caves are believed to be the hideout of the infamous pirate captain, Hippolyte Bouchon. Okay. Welcome, treasure hunters. All right. See you on your way. Good luck, treasure hunters. Aim and fire. There are both physical and digital targets, and you are racking up as many points as you can along the way, trying to beat up to three opponents in your cart. <laughs> there is no escape for you. Step the crew, rise. Rise off and capture these intruders and kill all the long. <laughs> What a great addition to Cannery Row. Okay, so that is now number four on the tour. <laughs> that was, was so much fun. It was fun. It's kind of like a, uh, did you guys know um, Toy Story ride at Disneyland? It's kind of like that. You drive around in a car and you shoot treasure and try to score points. And I got to be the pirate captain because I got so many points. I'll put the link down below along with some prices so you know there are different levels that you can play at. Inside this same shopping area, there are lots of great places to stop. But we discovered a shooting gallery this time. This little arcade is to the left of the treasure hunt ride and Harry had a great time trying to hit the moving targets. Go for it. The pay system was not so clear, but you can keep up in your gameplay as you go along. Just make sure that it stops flashing when you are done. We also discovered this pottery store as we were leaving the section. It's gorgeous. And for someone who's trying to downsize, it was super hard for me not to take something home with me, especially since it was all priced so well. I'll be back to shop for gifts this holiday season. 
As you exit, you find yourself at Steinbeck Plaza. Okay, so here's one of those little known facts that you may never have known before today. And I, working at the Steinbeck, just recently found out. So we're here on Cannery Row, but it wasn't always named Cannery Row. This started out as Old Ocean View Boulevard until John Steinbeck wrote the book, Cannery Row. It was such a hit, the town actually renamed the row after his book. So that's how Cannery Row came to be. All right, so right here in the middle of Steinbeck Plaza, named after John Steinbeck, of course, is this great sculpture or set of sculptures all about Cannery Row. Mac of the boys and Flora and her girl. And of course, at the very top, John Steinbeck. They say the characters in Cannery Row were based on his real life friends, including Ed Ricketts. But Steinbeck said they were very loosely based and meant to convey a certain attitude rather than the real people who lived there. The king of the sardines was the K. Hoven Company. If you look along the row, you will see these displays about the row's golden past. Okay, so another must stop place to go on the row is Ghirardelli. Let's go get some chocolate. All right, see something you want? So much to choose from. What's your favorite type? Mine is dark chocolate sea salt. What about you, Harry? Those that you like? Sea salt and almond. Sea salt and almond. Ooh, these are some new flavors. White chocolate sugar cookie. Let's give those a try. Yep, we're gonna need a bag. <laughs> Crispy rice. Ooh, Nate would like that. Double chocolate. Well, that is intense. 72. Probably might like those. Ooh, coffee. Coffee. All right, if you guys know how much I love coffee. We gotta take a few of these, right? <laughs> There's just so much fun stuff to choose from here. All right, time to go. Okay, so we got our treats and some of the best hot chocolate ever. Definitely. The chocolate and the view, it's worth it to come here. And we have a little seat at the table and enjoy the view. All right. Here we are on stop number five, Rock and Roll Donuts. Absolutely. Since it's Mother's Day weekend, I get to hang out tomorrow morning, not have to cook, so I'm gonna enjoy some Rock and Roll Donuts. They're not your everyday donut. Let's go show you. Oh, yes. All right, so you start out with clear glaze and then it gets fun. There's breakfast. Ugh, blackberry cream. Boston cream. Oh, and Harry's favorite, the Samoa. Okay, so it's been a super fun time on Cannery Row. We're going to link a video at the end about more of our explorations in Monterey Bay. But we hope you had a good time. Take care. Safe travels. And we'll, and we'll see, see you next, next time. time. We hope we've tempted you to come see Cannery Row. Give us a thumbs up. That makes YouTube so happy. And we hope you will subscribe and come along with us on our adventures. Because that makes us so happy. Check out the playlist linked at the end for much more to see and do in Monterey County.